Oh, good afternoon. Uh, we are so glad to be with all of you on our kind of sadly um, final one of our Lunch and Learns on Money Stewardship. And I'm Beth Fain, one of your missioners for her congregational vitality. And this is my friend, Ellie Singer, who is um, social media and multimedia specialist. So um, I will be checking the stream as it's going. If you guys have any questions, comments, drop them in the chat and I will interrupt as politely as I can um, so that we can answer your questions and respond live. So remember to drop those in the chat. Thanks, Ellie. So let me begin by sharing, oops, I think I have to share my screen first, don't I, Ellie? <laughs> So this uh, session is about follow-up. What do we do near the end of um, the money stewardship mission as we get ready for the next thing? And then also about what's next from the diocese to support you in your ministry. And so as we have begun each week, this is a stewardship prayer uh, written for the Diocese of Texas, adapted from the Book of Common Prayer, but made our own. And so as we come together at this time of day, uh, you're invited to stop for a second and just breathe. You've made an offering of your lives and let's give this time to God. Generous and loving God. So draw our hearts to you. So guide our minds. So fill our imaginations. So control our wills that we may be yours, utterly dedicated to your service. Use us and all of our resources, each minute of our day, each of our humble gifts and talents and even our finances, as you will. And always for your glory and for the welfare of your people, in and through and with the power of your spirit. Amen. Amen. So each week we've featured a different scripture. And one of my pl favorite places to go to look for Bible studies um, that can inform our understanding of, of stewardship and all of its many facets is the offertory sentences. So our scripture today is one of the offertory sentences. It's a more contemporary version than what you may have in a prayer book. And of course, you don't have to read exactly what's in the prayer book. There's so many Bible translations. And so this is a different one. This is our scripture for today. From Psalm 96, verse 8. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name. Bring offerings. Come in to God's courts. So... Early days in our conversations, we talked about that we each probably have the same three early lessons from whoever our caregivers are. One of the first things we learn to do is to say, please. The next thing it is most likely say thank you. And then the one that we struggle with the rest of our life is share. And I think these three principles, these most basic of human principles are really at the heart of our, any money stewardship mission we have. How are we saying please? How are we saying share? And how are we saying thank you? Not just to God, but to those people who say yes to the invitation. So we've talked about, particularly in this time, to look at as we plan our money stewardship missions, what is absolutely essential? And we've talked about that there are some statistically significant things that we can do in our money stewardship. These are things that for me feel like really should not be optional because the research, particularly from the Lake Institute says it, the congregations who do these things, they're money stewardship over time, taking three to seven years to change culture, significantly increases. So first is getting comfortable about talking about money. 
having a rector or vicar who knows who gives and how much. That it's tied to giving to mission and ministry and not budgets. That there's lots of opportunities to tell stories, provides a variety of ways beyond checks and dollars, but a variety of ways to give money. And maybe the most important of all is very, very careful in how they say thank you. So when we talked about being comfortable talking about money, um, is this may be one of the great gifts of the church. Money's important to us and there are lots of ways that we can talk about money. And so part of getting comfortable about talking about money is that statistically it says in congregations where the clergy knows who gives and how much, which ties into talking about money, not about specific givers, but in general, that there is a atmosphere, an atmosphere of being comfortable with money. And then telling stories, telling stories, telling stories, telling stories about mission and ministry and doing it in a variety of ways. We talked about some of those ways last time. And in how we tell our story, being very, very, very careful and thinking about how is our story part of God's story. And I got a couple of really um, very, very interesting um, ways that you can do that. So I'm going to have to do a little uh, tech here. And I need to share another screen. And this is the screen I'm going to share. So this is a larger version of a money stewardship letter. So this came from a little church, a very small church, maybe 75 people on Sunday morning. And what I like about it is they told their story by putting each part of their story of a photograph. Here it says, a group from St. James helps tend the greenhouse on the grounds of Victory Home. A large crop of mushrooms was recently harvested. And then at the very bottom, there's an invitation to give. But this is their stewardship letter. It tells a story. I think this is a great example. And it's not long, but I suspect that everyone will read it. And I want to share another story. This is from Lago Vista in our own diocese. And let's see if it comes up. Sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. Oh, and I need to turn on my sound so you can hear it, hopefully. Now this is a six minute long video. We're not going to listen to the whole six minute, but what I love is Lago Vista maybe has 25 people on Sunday morning. It is a very small church, but they created a money stewardship video. So I want to show you part of it. This is another way they told their story. This is on their YouTube channel. Loving refers to everything we do, and it begins with worship and what we hear in Scripture. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Do not be afraid, Mary. And face them in an angel, because there was no guest food available for them. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And so then you keep going and they show lots of great pictures. You spend a lot of time, oh, maybe two or three minutes talking about worship and how that's their story, but you get a real sense. But then they go back- New ways of thinking and behaving. Like Mary, improvising a place for her child. In fact, we know that behaving differently means thinking differently will follow. We had a baptism, which was the first in a long time. We had a wedding for the first time in 10 years of Cherie and Julie. We attended 
and acted as a family for Julie. Liberating means also becoming free from the mentality of scarcity. We can't do that because we don't have enough money. We're too small. We used to be more. Liberating means embracing a vision of abundance. We do have choices. Life-giving means rejoicing in all the ways we are fed and then reaching out to feed others, sometimes literally, and other times by sharing our wonderful church buildings, which have been fully paid for by the abundant resources given by members past and present. And then they show all the ways that the church has been, sh they're sharing their space where you get a real picture. But then at the end, we worship together, we do outreach together and are fed in many ways. The last two minutes is the senior warden inviting people to give. I think if you watch this whole video, you get a real sense of the story of this congregation. And I think that's really, an, this is a small church. This is not a church. It's not, it's the best they can, but it's not professional. And this is a great way to tell a story. I love this so much. And the authenticity really shines through. I get the sense that that is who they are, not just what they paid to look like or something like that. But when I watch that, I feel like, okay, I have a feel for this community and I even feel tied to that community that I've never been there before. Well, it makes me want to go. Yeah. They told their story. They told who they are. So, it, And this is on their website. This is on their YouTube channel. So this is a great way to tell their story in the midst of their money stewardship. So I'm going to share again, maybe. Yep. <laughs> Oh, and remember everybody, if you have comments or questions, please drop them in the chat. So that was St. Peter's Lago Vista. But now we come to the real part of today, which is thank you. Particularly in this time, thank you may be the most important part of our money stewardship mission. Just today I heard particularly that we treat every gift this way, every gift, Every gift is a major gift and treat the donors accordingly. Every gift is a major gift and treat the donors accordingly. So one of the things that the research says, if you don't thank anybody else, you thank the first time givers in a personal way. And you thank the first time pledgers that the repeat of a gift goes up statistically significantly when those two groups of people are thanked. But maybe the most important part of all, particularly in the pandemic, is that there is a personal touch. And I was telling Ellie about um, a letter I got yesterday inviting me to give. And the first thing was, um, and I just, I, I'm real curious about it, but there was a sticker um, with my name and, and, the, and so that was okay. But it said, the Fane family. Well, I'm Beth Fane. I'm the family. And so it didn't feel really personal. It felt like I was just part of a, a machine. And then the inside letter was beautifully written. It was on yellow paper. It was, it was well read, but it was obviously just photocopy. So there were a couple of little tweaks I could have done that could have made it a little more personal. This is not to criticize them, but I think particularly now that people are looking for that connection. And in the way that we say thank you, to be very careful about how we do that personal touch. And maybe the biggest question of all after the thank you is, do we follow up? Well, I'm gonna tell you, stati the, the statistics say it really doesn't, I'm gonna say this, it just didn't seem to make a difference one way or another. I think you do what happens, it works best with your culture. I think if we're looking pastorally, if people have given in the past and they don't this year, that perhaps this is a year to check in with them and to make sure they're okay. 
I know that there's one uh, money stewardship program that says you absolutely do not follow up and that's part of the, the program. But I think again, you look at the opportunity for it, you look at the more people that you can get involved in that, um, not just your vestry, not just your rector, but can you create a people a group of people that maybe write a note or do a phone call? The more hands and touches we have in our money stewardship missions, the more lives that will be changed. So were there any questions about stewardship before we show them another part of what's next, Allie? Uh, nothing yet. So let's go ahead and go to that web page. Oh. Well, we need your help. We are starting to try to update our diocesan stewardship page. So what you do, yay, there's money stewardship right on the front page. You go to the front page, epicenter.org, and then you go to congregational life. And oops, sometimes things don't go fast. And then you go to stewardship. So Ellie, you want to talk about what we've done on the stewardship page that's now kind of in beta that could help us be better uh, do our money stewardship in a, in a more uh, discipleship way? Yeah, so um, let me walk you through what's on this web page here. Um, we start with prayer. And it's the prayer that we've had at the beginning of each of these um, PowerPoint lunch and learns. Um, and then once we have walked through that gate, we get to our first section is gonna be these money stewardship lunch and learns. Um, you'll be able to access all of the PowerPoints here and we'll embed the videos. That's what that little space is beneath each um, title is where the video will go. Facebook and I have been having some standoffs today trying to get those, <laughs> but I promise they'll be there. Um, then beneath that, we have some stewardship programs and curricula. Um, and so you can check out these resources um, that Beth suggested. You clicked on our money story and it went to that, which is um, one of my personal favorite resources right now. But what it also tells you is a little bit about so you'll know what you're going to. We really tried to clean it off and just have things that we think are really good. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's simple, it's to the point, and it, it has what you want. Um, and then below that, we have a section of good reads. So these aren't going to be as intensive, like these, this is a plan for you. These are more informational um, articles, um, resource centers that you can access and just do some reflecting, learn some stuff. My favorite, giving patterns of millennials. Key. And it gives you the latest research on that. Um, and then finally, what would this be if there weren't a way for you to get involved some more? Um, so Beth, do you want to talk about this? Um, well, this reminds us that we'd love to create with you some communities for conversation. We can, we can create anything that you can think of. We only want to do the things that will be helpful. And so we've been getting together on Thursdays at three, a group of us for an hour to talk about best practices for money stewardship. Um, you just click on my name. We are not meeting today. I had um, a conflict and I couldn't, um, a scheduling conflict, so I couldn't do that today. But um, click on that. And actually, if you just email, well, no, I really don't need this, but I need this. I will help you find what, you, what we'll do best. But, knowing that we want to help partner with you. And really, my experience is y'all know more than we do. And then when we have conversations together, we get much better ideas. And anyway, I want to thank Ellie, who's been working on this. It's uh, We're going to get together this afternoon. If you see something you think should be on there, if you see something that doesn't make sense, again, here is my email address. You can click. I will do my best to make sure it happens. So finally,
A reminder that you're invited to the stewardship conversations on Thursdays, not this Thursday, but next Thursday starting. Uh, email me. But basically, um, I think the best word for stewardship is enough. There is enough. So did we have any questions, Ellie? Or is on mute? Um, not yet, but if you um, are watching, joining us right now, please leave a comment or a question or just a thought. What kinds of resources do you wish were out there? Um, what kinds of worries are we having right now about stewardship? What can we celebrate? Um, really, we want to hear from you and build community around this. So now I'm going to talk to my friend Ellie because um, I'm of one giving generation. She's of another giving generation. And from what you've heard in four weeks, what, what do you think are maybe, um, so, and I, I'm not I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit while we're waiting for questions, but what do you see as maybe some of the most important things that you've heard as just a member of a congregation? Yeah, um, so I am Gen Z, that, that millennial, uh, PDF that you showed, I'm like, oh yeah, those older people, <laughs> these millennials, um, off buying houses and having children, right? I, I think over these past four weeks, what's really stuck out to me is um, two words, authenticity um, and personal touch. That's three words, but it's two ideas. Um, but I think that I, it doesn't so much matter to me that you have spent a bunch of money workshopping this thing, coming up with a video, um, producing something fancy. In fact, I feel like I, I look at those kinds of things and go, is this where my money is going to, to producing this video? Um, but that, that the video that we watched today was so authentic. Um, and being able to get involved in stewardship in a personal way, in a relational way, um, that is what excites me. Less than getting the copy exactly right or making sure all the colors are correct or something like that. But, but really having that personal connection is so, so important. I mean, we're all so isolated. Um, having somebody reach out and say, we're part of a community, can you support this community together with us? Um, you might not be a super established um, adult in your 50s or something like that, but you're a part of this too. I mean, how often are we invited to that table? It, it can actually be so exciting. Um, yeah. You know what I like? Well, I like a lot of things you say, Ellie, but one thing is we have talked a lot about um, stewardship, about building relationship with God, with one another, with a community. And what I heard was in the really authentic and personal way that speaks to you as a member of a congregation, that it builds a relationship with the community and that we really have an opportunity this year with money stewardship to really build relationships by the ways we do little little tweakings. And I love being reminded of that. Yeah, yeah. It's a great way to, um, to think about, oh, these are the things that I actually do with people. Well, let's take a step back and think about the community that we actually have together. Um, I'm also thinking about that uh, letter that you just showed today with all the pictures, walking through, the, sort of like a yearbook from high school or something. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That was this year. Um, and that's and that's wonderful to also just have around. I, I think that there's so much more to money stewardship than just money. Well, and those were photographs taken on an iPhone. And I'm going to tell you the person who created that money stewardship letter is 79 years old. Um, so, I mean, it's not about, I mean, she just got on her computer and put that together. Um, so I think what I want to say is, but she had conversation with other people. She didn't do it by herself. She had other people. She was in conversation with the rector, with her team, and together they, they came up with that. And I think that's the other thing that we do that if we're building relationships that actually in the midst of 
um, putting forth our money stewardship missions, and I always like to think of them as missions, is it's a way for us to build relationships within the community as, as well. Yeah. Um, I, I think the last thing that I would say from the perspective of the youth is <laughs> just having the variety of ways to give is so, so important. Um, I personally have one checkbook that is gathering dust from when I first got it when my dad told me I needed one in high school. Um, I think I've written maybe five checks ever. High school? Yeah, high school. I was like part of my <laughs> brand new checking account that like he also had access to, you know, one of those. Um, and yeah, so being able to pay online, being able to pay by text, um, via app, that all feels so natural. And I will say that like as part of my personal Christian life and community with others, mutual aid is so important. I'm, I'm always sending money to people who are in need um, in my community saying like, I can't cover this medical expense. Can I have help? And I Venmo them, right? I, that is one of the major uses of these um, money exchanging apps. So it feels natural to be able to give to a church via those means. Um, that being said, I'm not everybody. So having that variety um, is really interesting. Um, and I kind of like seeing all the different ways that people like to give because again, it reminds me that there are so many other people in the community. It's not just me over and over and over again. My mom who's 94, the only way she can give at a church is to write a check. So if she doesn't have a way to get her check in, she's not gonna give. Mm -hmm. so we need both. Well, I don't, do we have anybody that has any further comments or conversation or anything? Um, no, not that I can see, which might be a Facebook thing or it might just be that people, um, are stewing on it and just thinking about it. So if you have more comments and questions, this is the last episode, I guess, of this Lunch and Learn series, but um, please do email Beth. And that will be, your email is on the stewardship website that we have, which is epicenter.org slash stewardship. Um, and then I'll put it in the comments below as well so that people can have access to that page. So thank you for those of you who um, have given up um, a half hour on these days to be in conversation with us. Um, it has been so rich. I've loved working with Ellie. Thank you. I've loved the conversations that we've gotten back, particularly by email. Um, and just remember, if God has called you to ministry, God will give you enough. Mm -hmm. He's inviting us all to partner with God. And this is yet one another way, another way to do that. And so as I pray a blessing for all of us. And now God, where your truth has been spoken, may it grow in our hearts and inform our lives. Where we're mess, let us correct, just gently correct us or forget it. I pray a blessing on each of us as in every day and every way we grow in our relationship with God and with our neighbors. Go in peace to love and serve God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Oh, we got one comment, it's from Liz. Thank you for doing this series. Thank, Thank you, you Liz for walking with us in this. I know Liz, you're awesome. <laughs> All right, bye guys.